CBS 2 News. Rain and snow across the region. The good news for our snowpack and why it isn't going anywhere today. We have not been able to fund the people to work in the fire station. Weighing the options. How one Treasure Valley city is coping with development after a new law cutting property taxes. And crushing the curve through vaccinations. We take you to the clinic helping get more shots in arms for free. CBS 2 News starts now. Scattered showers, thunder, lightning, even some high elevation snow. Now it's been a mixed bag kind of day and we definitely need the moisture. This is a look in downtown Boise, even with a nice little rainbow there for you. Now CBS 2's Kristen McPeak is here to talk about why you don't want to put your umbrellas away just yet. Gosh, that rainbow looks gorgeous. Uh, I unfortunately don't have a rainbow here. This is a live shot of the clouds over Boise. Uh, you can see that we are seeing a lot of dynamic changes here as the day moves on. Uh, take a look right now at our current temperature. We're at 53 degrees, um, some calm winds, not a lot of stuff going on in terms of atmosphere there. But what we're going to expect as we move forward, scattered showers are expected to continue through the weekend, even through Monday. It'll be off and on here and there. A little bit. I think we made it through uh, the most uh, rainiest parts of our days and it'll be cool and unsettled in the mountains as well. So that means some snow could be expected. We're also going to warm back up to normal temperatures on Wednesday. Right now we're about below normal. So here's our projected rain totals over the next 24 or 48 hours. Excuse me, about a quarter of an inch of rain in Eagle and up on Bogus Basin in Emmett. Uh, just uh, uh, about nine tenths of an inch here in Boise. So not a a lot of rain here, but definitely it's going to continue uh, to accumulate over the next few days. Well, thank you, Kristen. Tonight, big concerns about how to fund vital city services after state lawmakers pass statewide property tax relief. Now, the new property tax law known as HB 389, it could mean less money for fire departments and police departments, which is why the city of Nampa is holding a meeting next week to discuss the law's fiscal impact and how it may affect growth. CBS 2's Trevor Fay is giving us a preview of what we might expect this Monday night out at Nampa City Hall. And growth is very important for a city that's seen thousands of new residents in just the past few years. But with that growth comes expenses, and securing enough money to go around is challenging. We have not been able to fund the people to work in the fire station, the, the personnel. So by moving to a fire district, the hope was that the fire, does, the fire district personnel do not get caught up in a city budget, and that they can make the decisions that need to be made to provide services to our citizens. Those services include a police force, which is facing similar problems in terms of staffing. The police department being one of the bigger budgets coming out of the city, we have, um, you know, we've been in constant contact with, uh, with the finance director uh, just to make sure that uh, you know, that we can give a good, fair budget to the to the city council to consider for fiscal year 2022. You'll also be speaking about this a bit more during your Monday meeting. Yes. Correct. So what's the agenda there? So the intent of the Monday meeting is to talk about a fiscal impact study that we are currently, we have been working on. We've been trying to make wise decisions related to growth. But not everyone is down on the new property tax law. Some developers say it's been helpful to their business's growth, allowing them to focus more on remodeling than new construction. But for industries like law enforcement, it's a different story. We're authorized 134 sworn officers, which puts us about 1.1 officers per thousand residents. Our goal um, is to be at 1.5 officers per thousand residents, which that leaves us, uh, I believe it's 41 officers shortfall right now. That shortfall is something that must be resolved if Nampa is to continue its growth. And to do that, there must be strong leadership at the top. I can guide our staff, and that's what I'm doing, to make sure that we provide the city council and the planning and zoning department with the information they need. The City of Nampa will hold its special council meeting on Monday, May 24th at 5.30 p.m. 
While Napa is not alone in its concerns, the city Caldwell leaders have now paused new development. That's up for four months. House Bill 389 lowers property taxes, and so city governments, they're trying to figure out how to make up that within their budgets. An 8% cap on increases and a 90% cap on the value of new construction. And speaking of new constructions, numbers to keep an eye on. Home prices, they're hitting record highs. The National Association of Realtors says in April, the median sale price of a home was a record $341,600. That's up 19% from a year ago. And homes are selling in record fast paces of just 17 days. It's all due to market shortages, creating stiff competition, especially with all cash buyers. But many real estate companies, they expect the housing market to flatten as the year goes on. Happening today, Crush the Curve is hosting a mass vaccination drive through clinic for anyone 12 and older. It's happening through 7 o'clock in the economy parking lot of the Boise Airport. That's when you'll get your first dose. The second dose will be given at that same location on June 12th. For more information, head to IdahoNews.com. And new coronavirus cases across the U.S. have tumbled to the lowest rate in 11 months. Hospitalizations and deaths, they're also falling. Now, more than 60% of Americans over the age of 18 have received at least one shot. But demand for vaccines, it's continuing to drop across much of the country. In Alabama, just 34% have taken one dose of the vaccine. And health experts worry that puts people at risk for variants, such as the strain first identified in India, which has now been identified in Alabama, Tennessee, Nebraska, and Nevada. Well, State Representative Priscilla Giddings plans to run for lieutenant governor. Giddings says she's running because Idaho deserves a representative to be represented by a proven conservative. Here's what she told Nate Shellman yesterday on 670 KBOI. The core of Idaho are conservative, you know, God-fearing, American-loving, Idaho-loving patriots. And they deserve to be fought um, for their, their freedoms. And, and I want to do that. I want to continue the fight. And if I'm drawing ire from the radical left wing, from the ACLU, from the establishment, then I think I'm doing my job well, and I want to carry on the fight. The announcement comes the same week the current Republican Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan announced her campaign for governor. At the same time, the ACLU of Idaho and the Idaho Female Veterans Network Board of Directors is calling for Giddings to be investigated and to resign. Now, both organizations say Giddings shared identifying information about the 19-year-old intern who's accused former Representative Aaron Von Ellinger of sexual assault. And it also appears Eamon Bundy is running for governor. The Secretary of State's office says he filed the paperwork yesterday. However, he'll have to refile it because of an error. The treasurer, which he listed as himself, has to be a registered voter. And Bundy is currently not registered to vote. Now, he's no stranger to the headlines as he's been arrested several times at the Idaho State House on trespassing charges. He also led the takeover of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge back in 2016. Well, looking ahead, road crews are getting ready for chip sealing on I-84. The project on I-84, that's between Broadway and Black's Creek Road interchanges, it started today. And crews will also be working on the on and off ramps at Broadway, Gowan, Eisman, and Black's Creek. ITD says the project, it's expected to wrap up in mid-June. And in the meantime, drivers should expect delays in the work zone and occasional detours. Well, a Boise landmark is making a comeback. This was what it looked like, or very darn near close to what it looked like back in the day. By back in the day, he means way back in 1883. Now, this railroad card retired from duty in 1933, and it began its second life as a bar, most fondly remembered as the Trolley, a popular neighborhood tavern on the Boise bench. But this trolley was actually destroyed by arson back in 2006. In 09, the owner of Sockeye Brewery, they bought that burnt out relic and brought it back to life. Now on Sunday, the trolley will be lifted by a crane and placed on a foundation next to the Sockeye Grill and Brewery's Fairview location. Eventually on the top here, we'll have uh, hand lettered, kind of hand gold lettered uh, Sockeye Brewing Railroad car uh, number one, as well as uh, the original Oregon Railroad kind of signage to make sure that we're paying respects to where it came from. 
Eventually, it will be used for events and it can actually seat between 25 to 30 people. Coming up on CBS 2 News, gearing up for fire season. The decisions made inside Boise headquarters that affect crews across the country. CBS 2 News. The 2021 fire season is just getting started. Already, fires have burned almost 60,000 acres in eight states. This is a number that will increase throughout the summertime months. From coast to coast, all major U.S. fires, they have one thing in common, the coordination of resources. And our own Natalie Hurst takes us inside the National Interagency Fire Center to explain how decisions and about resources are made. We are the single focal point for the ordering of resources uh, for mobilizing and demobilizing to wildland fire and all risk incidents uh, throughout the United States. This is the place right here where critical decisions about fires are made. It's a one stop shop for information. Nine different fire management organizations call this 55 acre campus in Boise, Idaho home. We want to help the people on the ground. Workers at the National Interagency Fire Center dispatch crews and move technology around like this remote weather system. They put them up around the fires to monitor the weather. Their goal to make sure crews have everything they need to protect people, wildlife and property. It's a lot of work to make this all happen. They provide it all from the latest fire engines. These are um, new um, engines for BLM that we're going to be sending out to the states here over the next couple months. To the food for smoke jumpers. We'll set this whole box up and it goes into a kit. And the smoke jumpers, when they jump, then this kit is pushed out. It comes out in, in, in a parachute, lands on the ground. It's what they cannot plan for that makes fighting fires more challenging and dangerous. A lot of these um, fire, human caused fires are preventable. The National Interagency Fire Center says people caused more than 53,000 fires nationwide in 2020. That's an increase of 9,000 human caused fires from the year before. Pretty amazing stuff. Well, right now, let's take a look outside here. We're seeing a lot of cloud cover no matter where you go, especially in Boise. This picture changes every other uh, hour. You'll notice a different scene here with these clouds. Sun Valley looking gorgeous with that bright green grass. Stanley cloudy and McCall cloudy. So these clouds are going to continue uh, throughout the afternoon and through the weekend as we are going to see scattered showers. Right now we're at 53 degrees here in Boise and then 52 in Nampa and 52 in Caldwell, 57 over in Ontario, 58 in Mountain Home. So we'll pretty much stay in the 50s all afternoon and then 60s is what the McCall or excuse me what Twin Falls is in. So kind of the warmest part of the state along with Pocatello and Idaho Falls there. Um, so taking a look at our uh, forecast for today, you'll see we are going to stay in the mid 50s for the rest of the afternoon. Uh, right now we could be seeing some isolated thunderstorms and showers. Um, this is going to continue to change right now. The Boise radar is actually down, so we're kind of uh, looking at different uh, measurements from different parts of the state uh, to really get a good idea. So a lot of this is unsettled patterns. So we're really going to keep watching this and a lot of this activity is going to happen in Idaho, um, not as much as in Oregon. So here's what I mean when we look at the radar. We can see that a system is moving through uh, later on this afternoon and that will continue to move through and move out as a counterclockwise uh, system is circulating over the Boise area. You'll see um, this afternoon it'll be pretty clear, but by tomorrow we're going to see another system start to move in around Sunday afternoon, especially in the Stanley area and up in the mountains near Sun Valley. We could be seeing snow of, um, of over 5,500 feet. So that will eventually move out on Monday, but we could possibly see a little more uh, precipitation start to form back up again on Monday. So it's going to be a very diverse pattern over the next few days. We're definitely going to keep an eye on it. If you take a look here, this is what we're looking at at the seven day forecast. Uh, Partly cloudy skies expected for the rest of the week, basically, but there's those showers early in the morning. We could expect on Tuesday, 64 degrees. We're going to be back to normal temperatures on Wednesday at 70 degrees. Um, Thursday, really heating back up there, 77, and then back to the 70s by Friday and Saturday for your Memorial Day weekend. 
Up in the mountains, we'll see rain showers through at least Wednesday, where those morning showers will hit us in our area, 58 there, and eventually they'll move out. We'll keep an eye on what happens later next week. Sarah? We'll take it. Thank you, Kristen. Still to come, growing confidence and creativity. How one local art show is doing just that and the chance for the community to see it up close. is sponsored by CapEd Credit Union. Local students are shining a light on the importance of art and expression. In this week's Leaders in Learning, we show you an opportunity to see those scenes up close at the West Ada School District's art exhibition. Art is everywhere. It is in everything. Here at Initial Point Gallery in Meridian City Hall, the Meridian Art Commission is showing off some of the School Choice Award winners across the West Ada School District. Art opens the world to so many different things and it's subjective. His art is way more than just painting and flat objects on a piece of paper. Amy Cox is just one of many art teachers across the West Ada School District who's inspiring her students to get creative. And that creativity is now on display for the community to enjoy. The theme, art as an escape, a message reflected in each brush stroke and penned line, allowing these students expression and encouragement to explore the arts and their mind. With breathtaking views from inside these halls for all to enjoy. For this art exhibition, each school in the district chose one art piece as their school choice award. Along with an art show and a banquet celebrating those artists, these pieces are now set to be displayed here in the initial point gallery for one year. Now, if you want to get an in-person look at some of these pieces, you have the chance throughout the month of May, courtesy of the Meridian Arts Commission. The Initial Point Gallery is open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., with special extended hours on Thursday throughout May. For more information, head to our website, idahonews.com. Still to come, the Star Police Department giving back to their community, how they're reeling in future generations. Star Police Department hosted a fishing rodeo for local kids. Overall, the turnout was vast. Just take a look at that. There was fun games as well as free fishing bait to everyone who attended. This is something that I did when I was a kid. I love the outdoors. I wanted to pass that on and uh, just share some of those memories that I have, create some of those with the, the younger generation. Henderson tells us the department plans to make this an annual event, and you, you can see the rain, it didn't keep anyone away. Well, CBS 2 News continues throughout the evening, and we'll see you right back here for CBS 2 News at 10. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.